Have you been struggling to decide what you should be actually saving for? I know we constantly hear, you should be saving money, you should be saving money. And you may be thinking to yourself, what am I saving for? What am I doing? And what the heck do I do with this money? Well, my name's Crystal, AKA Crystal Maximizer, and I'm a strategic money coach. I help moms create financial stability through proactive planning and strategic money management. And in today's video, I'm gonna help you figure out how you're going to decide what you should be saving money for. So we've probably heard it all. 2023 is the year we should save more money. You should have a savings. You should have emergency savings. You should be saving for everything that you need. And you're probably sitting around like, how do I even decide? I have an unlimited income. How can I figure out exactly what I need to be saving for and why I need to be saving it? I'm gonna share with you eight things that you can do to help you decide what you exactly should be saving for. When we are talking about saving, I am talking about long-term savings. And what that means is something that you're saving for a year or more, or something that you are perpetually saving for every single month. Step number one, you need to review your money needs. You need to go and look back at your past two to three years, reflect. And I need you to ask yourself and write it down on a piece of paper, that's important. What are the big things with your money that just came up in the past two to three years that you were not preparing for? The pandemic, maybe you lost your job, maybe your hours got reduced, maybe you got a bonus, maybe you had to make a lateral move. Whatever that looks like, maybe your car broke down, maybe you had to move suddenly, what are those big financial things that happened in your life over the past two to three years that you felt like you were not completely prepared for? I want you to write all of those events down on the paper. Second, I want you to go through that list and I want you to decide which of these things are super important and could happen again that you wanna be prepared for. So you kinda wanna group things together and then you wanna go ahead and decide I see that a lot of emergencies came up. I see that I had a lot of car trouble. I see that I had to move twice. And you can start to see your trends and things that are the same. And I need you to really decide what are the top like three to four things that are very important that you're like, I need to have money for this if, because you were caught with your pants down, so to say, when these things came up in the past. So step number three is I said to choose, I said four, so two to four, that you're gonna focus on so you do not overwhelm yourself. If you try to save for 15 things every single year, you're gonna overwhelm yourself. You may not end up saving anything for any of them, or you may end up putting $5 a month into each one, which realistically isn't gonna help you when you have less than $100 in one of these savings funds. So I would say anywhere from two to four that are the most important to you, that you're like, if everything else was out of here, these things need to be funded. Step number four. I need you to sit down and decide how much do you wanna save for each category. So for example, let's talk about our emergency fund. For emergencies, I would like to have $10,000 saved. That's about almost three months of living expenses for my family if someone was to lose their income. $10,000 is also more than enough for us to buy flights for our whole family and a hotel and a rental car for probably two or three trips if we had to get up suddenly and go. I define emergencies as life or death incapacitating someone passing away in another state or something on fire. If something catches on fire and we have to fix it or repair it. That's what the emergency fund is used for. And that's why I decided that $10,000 is my number. For each of those two to four things that you decided are important, I want you to write the number. In 12 months, how much do you wanna have? Maybe this is something you're saving for three years, we'll talk about in a second. But I want you to write down how much total you want in this fund. Now that you have the total amount of funds that you have, step number five is when you're gonna decide, decide that length of time. So for me, I would love to save the $10,000 in one year, but I'm also open to the fact of like, it possibly could take me two years to get $10,000 in that fund, depending on what my income looks like. But if you have more of a fixed income, you can really project out how much money you can put aside and save and in that set amount of time. So let's just say you wanna save $2,000 for emergencies in one year, write that down. Maybe you wanna set aside $10,000 as a down payment on your new house in three years. So your length of time is three years. So next to each amount, you wanna put the length of time you have to save up this money. Tip number six, this is when we do the math and break it down. You need to break down this amount by the year, by the month, and even by the paycheck. 
So if you wanted to save $2,000 in one year, that comes out to about $200 per month. Let me do the math just to make sure, but it is around $200 per month when we round up. So the way to do this is I'm gonna divide 2,000 by 12 months. It's 166.6, so basically $167 per month is what you would need to save to have $2,000 in one year. If you get paid bi-weekly, you divide that by two, you'd have to put about $84 a paycheck away to have $2,000 for your emergency fund in one year. So divide your number by the months and that's what you'll have. And then you can break your month up by weeks and or by paycheck. Now this is gonna be able to tell you when you sit down and do your monthly budget and your line item, I need $167 a month for my emergency fund. And you can do that for all of your savings. Now this is gonna be a big telltale sign. If your goals are bigger than your pocketbook for the moment, you may have to reduce down the amounts. Maybe you can only do 100 to your emergency fund because you wanna put 50 towards your new house fund and 50 to your new car fund, and that's $200. And you would not be able to do 160 and 50 and 50 over here. So when you sit down and do this math, you can also reprioritize and say, hmm, what's most important? For me, it's really filling up that emergency fund because those are the things that I feel like my family was unprepared for, like on a deep level. A couple thousand dollars can only get you so far in my family with that emergency fund. So that's why 10,000 I would feel really secure with. Number seven, we need a place to save this money. So I suggest that you open a high yield savings account at your bank, at your credit union, or even Ally Bank Online. You want it to be at a different bank than where your regular checking account is. You do not wanna see this money every day when you're checking your bank account. Yes, I check my bank account every day. Let me know in the comments if you check your bank account every day. It's okay, it's totally normal. You're gonna check your bank account every day. But you do not want your long-term, over one year savings in the same bank where you log in and you could do a transfer in five seconds. You don't want that. So open a second account so that you can put your money in there, transfer your money there, deposit there, whatever works for you, but you need a secure place for your money. And tip number eight, put some time on your calendar to create your monthly budget and most importantly, set up a weekly money date with yourself and make the transfers. If you get paid bi-weekly, set up a bi-weekly money date and make your transfers bi-weekly. If you wanna automate it because your paycheck's the same and you just want your $84 to go out every single paycheck, you can do that as well. But you want to make sure that you set up a way to get that money transferred from your main money over to your savings account. So I hope that these eight tips were helpful in you actually knowing what you're actually going to be saving for. Everybody's gonna be saving for something different. As a money coach, I highly suggest everyone work towards an emergency fund and really clearly define what your emergencies are. Now, I did have a most recent video of how to save $1,000, so you can go and check that video right now on my channel. Very similar in the sense of like really breaking down your goals and getting super strategic about it. So if you wanna go check that video out, you can as well. And I also have a video on how to create a budget. So if you're really struggling on trying to figure out how to better manage your money, I share some really awesome tips in that video on how to create a budget. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments about how you are going to decide what you're going to be saving for. And if you need any additional help, you can join us inside the Money Saving Academy. There's details down in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.